Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. You know, I always like to start with something interesting and this definitely falls into that category. Now, I'm sure you've heard about Elon Musk. He's backing out about buying Twitter because, well, Twitter says that the number of fake and bot accounts is about 5%, but Elon Musk says, no way, that is closer to 20%. That's a huge difference. Well, guess what Facebook is doing? Soon, you can have up to five different Facebook accounts tied to your one profile. Okay, why ever would Facebook want to make this change, okay? Well, simple. This is going to make it almost impossible to say how many fake bot accounts are on Facebook. I mean, Mark thinks we're all just dumb suckerbergs, but we're not. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, just an example of all the fun that we have here week after week as we talk about living the best digital life ever. I'm, of course, America's beloved digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. And you can find us on over 425 top stations across the United States. We're streaming in your favorite radio app. And, of course, we're streaming on demand 24-7 as a podcast, as a webcast over at GetKim.com. And a huge thank you goes out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio. I'm talking about 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 different countries and 200 ships at sea get the Kim Commando Show. Thanks, you guys and gals, for listening. And, of course, I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 So way to join us. All right, let's start with five things you need to know about tech. It's happening right now. We're going to start with gun laws and social media, because I have to tell you, I've been talking and writing about the consequences of what's posted on social media, well, even before the days of MySpace. Yes, remember Tom. And in its short five-year life before Facebook totally overtook it, careless MySpace postings cost people their jobs, their promotions, their relationships, political races, and more. But now listen to this. The state of New York is going to do a deep dive into your social media account to determine if you deserve to own a firearm. The state's exact wording is this. Social media accounts will be used to review the applicant's character and conduct. So if you brag about partying all the time, hating the cops, posing with your gun, something that unless you're a hunter, I never quite understood why that was a thing. I can pretty much guarantee that you won't be buying any kind of gun in the state of New York. And I expect other states to follow New York's lead. There's just one thing. You know, a lot of people have a Finsta and a Rinsta social media account. You know what that is? The, the Finsta account is your fake account. The Rinsta account is the real account. So the state employees have to be smart enough to actually track down both. Hmm. Not so sure that's going to happen. Uh, number two on our list of five, Teslas are so expensive because they charge a lot. Uh, consumer reports say that the number one reason consumers don't buy an electric vehicle is because they get anxiety, their fear of low barity batteries with no recharging stations nearby. So depending on where you live, that's not really that unusual. But at Tesla, things may be even deeper brewing in the trouble factory because Tesla's autopilot has been plagued with some high profile crashes, a few fatal. So the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they stepped in this on this autopilot investigation. Now, the entire program is under a microscope, all of which makes this sudden resignation, all right? And you know, when this happens, you have to like sit back and go, hmm, I wonder what caused that. Tesla's chief autopilot engineer, Azra's Carpath, he suddenly resigned. You know, corporate insiders have a knack for doing this before everything just hits the fan, right? And now for his part, Elon Musk says a new version of the autopilot is coming next month, but again, that's Elon Musk talking. Uh, number three in our list of five, Ubers are getting uber expensive. That's right. Travel season's here. Airline tickets cost a ton. Hotels are booked. And now you have, you know, you need an Uber. Okay. Oh, and by the way, Uber has this new feature. You ought to check it out. Is that you can actually give Uber your flight number and then they're going to track when your plane actually lands. And then you have 60 minutes to go find the Uber at the curb. Really, really sweet thing. But anyway, Uber has hiked prices around the world because they say of higher gas prices and shortage of drivers. And if you're traveling on a budget, this new report is interesting. Okay, let me ask you a question. Which city is the most expensive to catch an Uber? 
what, what's that city? Well, NetCredit looked at cities all across the country to take a 6.2 mile ride. Think about it. Say it out loud. What city is going to cost you the most for that ride? Okay, we're going to come in. We're going to start at number five, Baltimore, $27.27. Number four on our list is Seattle, $32.63. Three on our list is Denver, $33.91. I was surprised about this one. Nashville, Tennessee is number two, $34.63. And the number one city, the most expensive place to take an Uber is New York City at $34.74. I had a friend who was an Uber driver. He said he didn't make it because his customers didn't like it when he went the extra mile. Sorry about that one. Okay, number four, it's probably the cost of an entree. Yes, if your favorite restaurant suddenly gets a bunch of one-star Google reviews, it might not be because the Department of Health is about ready to shut them down. Over the last week, a ton of high-profile, Michelin-starred restaurants from San Francisco to New York, they've been the target of scammers. Well, it's not really scammers. It's more like extortion. See what's happening. The restaurants are getting a barrage of one-star reviews on Google. These ratings show up when you search for anything on Google Maps, of course. And one restaurant owner got this email. I'm going to read it to you. Hello. Unfortunately, negative feedback about your establishment has been left by us. It'll appear in the future. One bad review a day. We are so sorry for our actions. We live in India, and we see no other way to survive, so we're begging you to send us a Google Play gift card worth $75, or the negative reviews will continue. Okay. All right, a Google Play card is used to purchase what? Apps, games, music, movies, TV shows, movies in the Google Play Store. Starving in India? Uh, More likely, they're going to sell that Google Play gift card at a discount. So here's the deal. They're smart enough to target high-end restaurants. They're smart enough to target your business, whatever business that you're in. So keep an eye out for this on your Google ratings. And if one obviously really bad review just pops up, make sure that you contact Google immediately. And last, coming in at number five, oh, I know you're going to love this. Nothing says fashion. Think about the fashion houses, the House of Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, Microsoft. We What? Microsoft? Yes, the house of fashion. Have you seen Bill Gates on any interviews? I actually had the chance to interview him in person years ago. It's kind of a good look for Bill Gates. Golf shirts, khaki pants, sensible shoes. Guy always has sensible shoes on. Now Microsoft is bringing the geek look to its own line of clothing. I kid you not. There's the hardware tech cargo pants. They come in green or green. Yes. The pants have a ton of pockets for all your devices, and on a hot day, they say, you can zip the legs off and have cargo shorts on if you need to. It's so versatile that you can do your thing. $150 for the Microsoft cargo pants. Now, to complete your look. Oh, come on. If you're going to wear the pants, you might as well go buy the shirt, too. We have the Blue Sky Green Hill t-shirt. On the front, there's the Microsoft Designer hardware logo. Okay. And on the back, oh my gosh, this is going to make the girls go wild. Oh, wait. On the back of the shirt, there's the Windows XP Bliss wallpaper. Remember that? Uh, So your whole outfit is going to cost you $210, $150 for the pants and $60 for that nice Bliss t-shirt, right? Uh, The designer said about the t-shirt, listen to this. I grew up with this iconic image as a symbol of potential opportunity, and hope. He's talking about the Windows XP logo. I don't know what Windows XP this guy was using. Uh, Seriously, the hardware line looks like classic nerdware. I mean, it's maybe instead of clothing, Microsoft should have gotten into desserts, like maybe getting like a raspberry pie. Raspberry pie. Get it? Okay. You know, computers for nerds and geeks that buy the Raspberry Pi. It's Linux-based. Okay, that was a really nerd joke. I'll show myself out. All right, coming up in this show. Oh, my gosh. I had so much that I want to share with you. I had trouble. It's like squeezing it all in. Uh, We're going to be talking about three ways you can find out if your smart TV has been hacked and how to protect it. Oh, I found a really great site to stargaze. And then you can find out if the light is maybe a little too bright where you can go. We have four apps that you should check on your phone right now and you want to remove them because they're nothing but malware. We have some apps that you're going to want when you're traveling to a foreign country. And of course, we have all of your phone calls and you have me, Kim Commando. Hey, 
Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 Once again, is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder, if you ever have a question for me and you're just too darn shy to get on a national radio show and big time podcast where we have, you know, I don't know, millions and millions of listeners. It's cool. I get it. Sometimes even I get scared. You can drop me an email, head over to commando.com and in the right hand corner of our homepage, there's a link that says email Kim. And that's where you can send me a note and I'll answer it here on the show, maybe on the site, or maybe even invite you to call me. And then we can speak one-on-one. Again, that's commando.com with a K. Moments away from a great tip about the best settings for your television. And how about we start with uh, Brenda in Tucson, Arizona. Hello there, Brenda. Hi, Kim. Hi, can Brenda. Glad to... Yes, we have you. So glad that you're with us. So what's going on in Tucson? How can I help you out? Well, thank you very much, Kim, for helping all of us. But um, we live in a remote area just outside of Tucson, and we have no cell service. Um, and if we walk up on top of the hill, we can get some service, but not not great service. I was wondering if you can recommend any kind of a cell phone booster or anything like that um, to help us out. Boy, so you really are in a remote area, huh? We are. So you have to walk up a hill to get a connection. Oh, I thought I was bad that I have to like go into the back into the back patio and, and instead of not being in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, my my dad lives a quarter mile away and he has cell service, but we don't. Oh wow, so. that's you know what? I'm sure it's very beautiful. I bet you the night sky must be amazing where you guys are at, right? It's Sonoida, yes. Oh wow, that's awesome. All right. Okay, so here's the deal, that they do make cell phone boosters. There's a company called WeBoost, and those are the ones that that I think really do work. Now, I will warn you, Brenda, that they're not cheap. I mean, we're talking about anywhere in the range of, say, 200 to even $500 for uh, a way to, to boost that connection. Now, it has to have some type of connection, at least one bar, in order for it to work. But the good news is that you can buy it on Amazon, you can install it, you can try it, and then if it doesn't work, you can make sure that you return it within the 30-day window, right? Uh, the one that I'm thinking of is the WeBoost. It's the homeroom. It's a signal that will boost 4G, light, 4G LTE rather, and 5G. And then it actually sits outside the house to try to pick up, pick up any type of signal. Uh, may I ask who's your carrier? Verizon. Um, sometimes if you call the carrier and tell them what the issue is, they have something called a femtocell. And you may be able to get it for free. Um, I've had some luck getting it for free. If you call and you say, you know what, I'm paying for this service and I can't really get because I don't even have any bars in all places. And so what it is, it's a, a cell phone repeater that will work on their network. And it's about the size of a water bottle. It's not very big. And then you're going to put that where you think it's going to have the best connection. Obviously not around any microwave ovens or any type of steel and iron and concrete walls. And so you want to make sure that it has a nice, clear view of the sky. And if you do call your carrier, sometimes, like I mentioned, that you will be able to get that for free. But you have to actually not speak to whoever answers the phone. You have to ask for uh, the customer retention department or somebody who's in charge of cell phone repeaters. But so anyway, so this WeBoost, I'm going to post a link to it over inside the Commando Q&A forum. Uh, and once you, uh, once you get in there, you'll be able to see that link. But I'm also thinking about if you haven't already looked into Starlink, Starlink is Elon Musk's satellite-based internet service. And it's $600 for the dish. I know it's expensive. And then it's about $110 a month. But I'll tell you, it's blazing fast speeds. And what I'm thinking is, is that you can set your Verizon phone to make calls over Wi-Fi and then you should be able to send and receive phone calls that way without depending upon a cell phone booster that may or may not work in such a remote area of the country. So, you know, look into Starlink, see if you can swing that. And this way you will be able to have Internet within your home as well. And then you'll be able to actually, I said, use your Verizon phone over Wi-Fi calling. You know, Starlink is the service that, you know, is starting to get a ton of traction. Um, as a matter of fact, I am building a house in Phoenix, as many of you know, because I've talked about it here on the show. And I was looking at, well, do we do Kyber? Do we do we do cable rather, or do we do Starlink? So just for giggles, I figured, you know what, I'm going to just apply to get the Starlink dish and see when it comes in my area. 
And I was so pleased about a week ago, I got an email that said, hey, you know, Starlink is going to be coming to this part of town in Phoenix. And in case you're interested, um, you know, let us learn more. So I'm trying to figure out if the speed is actually going to be compatible with everything that I have going on. Because as you might imagine with a smart home, um, and especially my smart home, it has to be super duper smart. And so there's a lot of, uh, I would, I think we have a hundred, last time I checked, it was 135 miles of cat six cable in this house, 135 miles. That isn't, isn't that just incredible? I mean, if you would have said that 10 years, you'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, you're talking Jetsons type stuff. But anyway, so if you're in Aurora area and you're listening to the show, you might want to check out Starlink. It has uh, better ratings, I think at better speed than Hughes, and it's about the same price. All right, let's talk about your television for just a second. Um, hidden deep within your TV settings menu, you have something called motion smoothing. Now, I don't know, when's the last time you actually looked at your TV's settings menu? Well, you know, maybe you want to do it over the next couple of days. Because motion smoothing, what it does is it artificially adds frames to whatever you're watching. It can make a movie look like a YouTube video. Sometimes they call it the soap opera effect because it's just so crystal clear. Now, it works great when you're, working, when you're watching sports or playing video games. Fast-moving content is a lot clearer, but there's a downside to this. A football moving really fast across the screen or baseball looks fake as more frames are added. With video games, motion smoothing is going to cause some tremendous lag, which is the death march of any gamer. So most movies are broadcast in 24 or 30 frames per second. Add motion smoothing, and then the movie looks just a little too real. So for most types of content, what I want you to do is to turn off that motion smoothing. All right, stay right where you are. Coming up, I'm going to tell you if your TV has been hacked here on The Kim Commando Show. All right, coming up in just a few moments, we've got some tips about you can check to see whether or not your TV has been hacked, right? But you never thought about that. And before we go back to all of your phone calls, let's say you're traveling to a foreign country this summer. You're super excited, but you've run out of time to be fluent in that language. No problemo. Here are two essential apps. First, you can have your own personal translator using Google Assistant app on your phone. Just say, hey, Google, be my Italian translator and help me speak Spanish, and Google Assistant will automatically translate the words so you can have a back-and-forth conversation with someone speaking a different language. It really works. It's super slick. And interpreter mode is what it's called. It works with 44 languages. Now, you already have Assistant on your Android phone, and on your iPhone, just download the Google Assistant app. Uh, second, you can translate words on menus, documents, and signs using the Google Translate app. It is like something from Star Trek. It's magic. You simply point your phone's camera at the sign, the menu, the document written in the foreign language, and then it just turns into English. Uh, Google Translate works with about 100 languages, like Tengo un vieja ceguero y obtenga más consejos técnicas en commando.com. That was like get more tech smarts at commando.com, which, by the way, I have to tell you our website. We are just super jazzed and super excited because ah, uh, yesterday we had the biggest traffic day, I think, ever at commando.com. And we just like to say thank you for everybody that visited the website yesterday because we had over 800,000 page views in one 24-hour time frame on our website, which was just incredible. And again, thank you for all your support. Uh, Jeff in San Antonio, Texas, you're up next. Hi there, Jeff. Well, hello. How are you? Good talking to you, finally. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your call. So, how can I? How can I've been I lend a hand? For years, have you? That's even. <laughs> well, that's even better. Yeah, I, I've been listening a bunch. Of, I just um, have never really called in before, and thought uh, this is a question perfect for you. Um, okay. I am not all that technically smart. Um, I'm 56, and my kids joke with me about how much I don't know about technology. But um, I'm I'm in a business where I have to be. A little bit savvy. I, I own an insurance agency, awesome. and I'm being asked to encrypt my hard drives on my laptop computers in my office, and I don't know how to do that. I went out to the internet to look for software to do that, and I was very confused. So I thought, mm-hmm. who to call but Kim Commando? She would have a great uh, answer for me. Here, and she's nice too. <laughs> she's not going to make fun of me. <laughs> well, not too much. <laughs> Swear. All right. Uh, so, what are you what are you using there on your insurance agency? What are you using? You got a 
Uh, what version it's, are you using? Uh, Mac, Windows? What do you got? Well, it is it is Windows. I'm on a Dell Inspiron. Um, I have to laugh too because just the other day I, somebody asked me, you know, what are you running? Are you running Windows 10? And I went. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. I am running I, Windows 10. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm, let me give you let me give you also another tip. It's not Inspiron. It's Inspirion. Dell Inspirion. Oh. Okay, just just well, so just let you know. So, yeah, you, so said you, you said you would tease me. <laughs> oh, I know. I said, you know what? I'm really sorry. I'm gonna forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Okay. All right. Now the good news is is that oh, you are already have it. What you need, you don't need to buy anything, and uh, so you're going to be. You, there's device encryption on Windows Home Edition, and then Windows Pro has BitLocker. And you can figure out which version you have by just going to the little About Windows, and I'll tell you which one that you got. And I'm going to send you a link uh, over at Microsoft's website that will walk you through step by step on how to turn it on. So that's all you need. That's you're just going to get that uh -huh. one link, and you're going to follow the steps. And it's just like go to Settings, go to Privacy, go to Disk Encryption, turn it on. It's really simple stuff. It's not a big deal. Um, let me ask you a question about insurance. Do you mind? Not at all. Okay. So what are you seeing as far as insurance rates for like cyber insurance? Are they because my insurance just seems like it just went up like astronomically over the last 24 months? Oh boy. Um as far as uh, cyber insurance goes, um well, let's just let's just talk in generalities for a second. Okay. Um the rates of insurance, it doesn't matter if it's your auto insurance, home insurance, renters insurance, cyber insurance, business insurance, all insurance rates are tied to the losses that are being experienced by the insurance company. Okay, so makes sense. when and there's two different categories. There's uh, you look at either the severity of those losses that are being filed or the frequency of those losses being filed. So if those losses are being filed more frequently, the rates are going to go up. If the losses are more in scope, in other words, they're they're harder and harder to for the insurance company to compensate for. And they're having to pay out more. That is also going to cause sure. the rates to go up. Well, I would guess that in cyber claims, you're probably seeing the frequency of those going up dramatically, I'm as sure. well as yeah. the severity of them. Yeah, because you know what? That's that's a good point. Because you know the average ransomware payout right now. I'm not talking about for individuals. I'm talking about for businesses. And you know, and keep in mind that the that they're targeting hospitals, schools, county governments. You know, big big names, mm -hmm. big things. Is that the average mm -hmm. payout right now for ransomware is eight hundred thousand dollars? Wow! Oh my I word! Mean, so that's I pretty high severity. Yes, and so now it makes sense on, and I keep going, but I'm nice. I keep being, yeah. Mark is my insurance. I'm like Mark. Come on, I'm always nice to you. He's like I know him, yeah. but I'm doing the best that I can. So, so what I'm going to do, Jeff, is I'm going to put a link to this over inside. Well, actually, we'll email you the link directly, and then for anybody else who you're sitting there and. Maybe you need to start encrypting your hard drive. You're like, I don't even know where to do. And if I Google search that, it does get really uber confusing. Is uh, Just head over to commando.com slash community and then the Q&A forums on the left-hand side. And that's where I always post links for you guys and gals so that this way you can get the, uh, the extra you know, information that you need without having to try to Google search anything. Hey, Jeff, thank you so much for your call. And see, I didn't make too much fun of you. Not at all. All right. Have you ever thought about your smart television? Okay, why is it smart? It's smart because it connects up to the internet, right? And once it connects up to the internet, what else can it connect to or who can connect to it, right? So you might not realize that there's a camera on your smart TV, but there probably is. It's more common than ever. It depends on the brand and model that you buy. But here's a good rule of thumb. If you can make video calls on your TV, you have a camera. Now, to spot the camera, search the edges of your TV screen. If you look closely enough, you should be able to find the lens. And it might be hidden, a hidden lens. And it's, it's useful, again. Uh, but remember, your smart TV is also connected to Wi-Fi. So how do you know if your smart TV has been hacked? Well, you want to start looking for strange setting changes. Hackers want to, you know, sit there and collect private data or use your network right under your nose. So maybe the camera or the microphone icon just pops up. You see random pop-ups on the screen and suddenly... Maybe the volume goes up, the volume goes down. Second on the list is you have unfamiliar video files in your folders. 
Okay, you may not know this, but many smart TVs have internal storage. And everything depends, again, on the brand and the make and the model. But if you root around the settings section to, to find your device preferences and storage folders, and you might find some weird webcam video files that you didn't record or save. And if you do find any of these, it's time to change your Wi-Fi and router passwords. Uh, number three is you want to check your app usage. Open the settings, check the Smart TV's app usage, and it's always in the apps section. And you can see if uh, anybody else is using your apps or using your passwords for that matter. And so we put together a whole guide that breaks everything down step by step, brand by brand. And so in case you're wondering, like, oh, how do I do this on my LG, my Vizio, my Samsung, my Sony, whatever it may be, is that we actually did all the heavy lifting for you. And so you just had to go over to commando.com. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. Go to commando.com, of course. And then there's a link that says Kim Show. And that's where you can start figuring out if maybe, just maybe, there's a hacker inside your TV. All right, still to come, we're going to give you a great website that we found to stargaze near you. And also, oh, wow, later on, a major malware warning that you don't want to miss four apps to check on your iPhone right now. And, of course, we have so many more of your fantastic phone calls you don't want to miss. Hey, for a limited time, we're giving away some free guides, and I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. We have a Windows guide and a Mac guide, and so that this way you can take your tech know-how to the next level. We've got some search tricks in there so you can find all your files and programs in a snap. Keyboard shortcuts, you're going to use time and time again. I mean, they are amazing. Uh, one that I use all the time is Shift-Command-R. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it brings up the reader. So if you're trying to read a, a website or a page or an article and you don't want to go through all the ads, if you just hit Command-Shift-R, that you can read it right there without all the ads. Really handy stuff. Uh, quick photo editing tricks without downloading any extra software. We have messaging shortcuts. So yeah, I don't know if you know this, you can get your text messages right on your computer. Super handy. And then we have some free downloads from Windows and Mac OS. So you're like, yes, I want my free guide, Kim Commando. Well, yes. You just have to go to one spot. That's commando.com slash free guides. Once again, that's commando.com slash free guides. Oh, just one thing I want to pass along before we go back to phone calls is that the website where in case you are looking for some places and some ways to stargaze near you or maybe where you're headed. It's not a fancy pants site. It's just a basic site that does what it does, and it does one thing well. It's called Dark Sight Finder, and it's created by a stargazer who just wanted to be free of the light pollution in big cities and find the perfect places around to get good glimpses of the entire universe. So if you are into stargazing, especially now, it's a wonderful time of year to go outside you don't want to miss this site. It's just darksitefinder.com. Again, it's not fancy, but it just gets the job done. Uh, let's see. Nancy in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Hi there, Nancy. Hi, Kim. Good to talk to you. You're always my go-to person when I have a security question. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So lay it on me. Well, my husband and I are going to be taking a three-week trip um, to Europe in the fall, and oh, nice. I was planning. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's our 50th anniversary trip. Oh, so I'm really wow, looking congratulations. forward to it. Congratulations! You know what? Well, thank you. You know what, Nancy? And they said it wouldn't last, right? They said it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Look at you guys. Well, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. But anyway, um, I, I normally use my iPhone. I'm a caregiver for my mother and another elderly relative, and they live distant from me. And so they have my number on speed dial. And I also have in my iPhone the contact people for all their caregivers and, and their medications sure. and things like that. Plus, I have on my iPhone all my travel documentation like my known traveler number and my credit card number for my airline and all of that so i have you know what you know so basically nancy it's your whole life is on the phone right (laughs) well i mean no i don't i don't have personal financial information on it and i don't link to my bank on it things like that all right that's good um 
I got it. And I use a VP, I use a VPN. Um, but the the dilemma is this: is I was just simply planning to take my iPhone with me and fork over the mega bucks that my carrier requires for international call service um, because it's limited to ten dollars a day. And I thought, right. well, I'm just going to have to do that. Well, my husband freaked out and he said, "Oh no, you can't take your iPhone. They can hack into it. They'll get into our bank accounts. Uh, they." can do that through email and so now i'm thinking do i have to get a burner phone and if i get a burner phone how do i get my elderly relatives who have me on okay (laughs) all right okay let's 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 just talk you you and i are just gonna have like girl talk okay all right (laughs) sure all right i'm i'm super excited about being able to travel again aren't you it's so amazing absolutely Um, yeah and so so in a couple of weeks, I'm going to France and Italy. Okay. Okay. And I'm and I'm taking my iPhone. I'm taking my MacBook, and I'm sure um, somebody in the party will take their iPad. Right. Right. You know, you could get hacked here in the United States. Just because you're traveling doesn't mean you're going to get hacked again or more often. Okay. You just need to be smart. Like for example, make sure that you connect to the right Wi-Fi. So if it just says you know, restaurant Wi-Fi, you know, it may be that right. it could be somebody else who's pretending to be the restaurant Wi-Fi, and then anything that you do will go pass right through. Um, you're right. It does get expensive. $10 a day is pretty much the gold standard on whether you're using Verizon, at t or what have you. T-Mobile has a nice international package. But if you want to use your phone over there and not pay the $10, is that you want to get uh, a SIM card that will work in the entire European Union. Because right. I assume you're not going to stay just in one country for those three weeks. Because no. otherwise, no. you know, it's, it gets crazy. You know, it's like, okay, saw the church. <laughs> okay, I saw the church. I saw the church again. Okay. So right. uh, so what I plan on doing is to get a prepaid SIM card. And the company that I'm using is Orange. Uh, oh, yes, I've seen that. Okay, because Orange includes, a, it's, a, it, it's one of the largest mobile providers in Europe, and they have great coverage through most of Europe, which is not always the case when you start looking at some of the other smaller carriers. So basically, you can uh, either order the SIM card here and have it sent to you, or when you get off the plane is that you buy the SIM card at the airport or what have you. If you run out of credits, is that you can always just fill up that SIM card you know, on the go, you can even go to a local grocery store or convenience store, and then you can add more credits onto that. Um, we are in the process of making this an entire tip versus SIM card versus eSIM card and also some travel uh, tips as far as how to use your phone when you're overseas because it's a, you know, it's a big issue. And you want to make, I want to make sure that you're always safe, of course. And so look for that coming within the next, say, week over at commando.com, which is plenty of time, Nancy, before you head over on your uh, three-week European tour, which is just fabulous. But tell your husband you love him. He's amazing. And you forgive him for all his indiscretions over the years, for not taking out the trash and whatever he hasn't done. You're not going to bring it up. But Kim Commando says, I can bring my phone with me because I need to have it with me because you are important to more people, right? You're caregiving. I've done that. That's a tough gig. And so remember, take some time for you as well. Okay, so this is a big warning. Cybersecurity researchers discovered four apps on the Google Play Store that are spreading malware. Joker malware is what it's called. It's type of fleeceware, meaning that it gives you some free trials, then it automatically switches to a subscription when it expires. So you getting rid of that subscription is just a complete nightmare. So here are the four apps. Blood Pressure Monitor is the name of one. Voice Languages Translator. Quick text SMS, smart SMS messages. So if you have any of those four on your phone, you need to make sure that you wipe them out. And if you missed those, any of that list or you want to see exactly what the ones are, make sure that you hit commando.com. Just search for four apps to check on your phone. It'll be there and stay right where you are. We have another show coming up here on the West Star Multimedia Network. Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening.